How much gear do you carry when you go to the woods? Some of us just bring a knife and a fire steel on a day hike. Um, I don't wonder how much of us know how to get a fire going with just a knife and a fire steel. Sure, it sounds easy. Uh, you've seen me do it a thousand times. But there's little things like wood prep, wood selection, um, knowing how to take down a tree with just a knife, and knowing how to use your fire steel correctly. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show a little bit about that. The first thing we're going to talk about is wood selection. Very important part of it. You see this dead wood uh, behind me? There's lots of small twigs, lots of dry stuff. It's been down there for a long time. Uh, the problem with that is it's laying like this. Even though it's up off the ground, it's laying uh, flat and water seeping in there. It's still going to be dry after you get a fire going. You can use that as firewood all you want. But to get a fire going, preferably you're looking for dead standing. And we're going to go show you one right now. I'm still walking around looking for that perfect piece of wood. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to grab this bark to, to make it as a platform. You've got to grab resources while you can. So even though this isn't the step that I'm on right now, I'm going to grab this because I'm here and just hold on to it. That is a funky wasp. Wow. That should do it. We found our piece of wood. This second one here. There are a few reasons why I picked this piece. Uh, first off, it's dead standing like we wanted. Uh, it's straight grained. It's a maple. It goes straight up. Uh, I know it's dead because the bark is peeling. If that wasn't happening and it, the leaves aren't on it yet like it is now, you can take your knife, just score it a bit, and you'll find out if it's dead or not real quick. And on a live tree, you'll just see a little tiny bit of green. That's not going to hurt the tree at all. I didn't even go past the cambium layer. The diameter of the tree is very important as well. You notice this is really uh, small. It takes up only a little bit of my knife. That's fine. This isn't going to be our fuel. This is going to be our kindling and some of our fuel. We don't have to have our whole fire with just this one piece, but this is a nice, usable, sizable piece um, to work with a knife. If you could pull your tree down without having to cut it with a knife, even better. But this one's on there solid, so we're going to chop her down with a knife. So because of the location of this tree, it's a little bit different. I could go all around it uh, otherwise, but I can't because this bigger one. We're just going to go at it from this, this angle. Going at 45 about. Well, there you can see I got about halfway through it just with that one uh, angle. If that tree behind it wasn't there, then you go around the circumference of the tree. It'd be a lot easier and more um, useful. But I'm just going to push it over like this. You guys get the drift. I dropped a piece of wood back to my camp. Now it's time to break it up. Uh, obviously, the most easy thing to do would just be to break it. So let's do it. One already split just by doing that. If you get to a part uh, on the stick, on the log, that you can't break anymore with your hands, or for some reason you want it to be more clean cut than just jagged, you just do the same thing. I'd go on at an angle on a 45. You can flip it around if you want. You go at it again from a different from a, a different spot. And by then it'll be easy to break. I've only got four little small pieces to work with here, but with this amount we should be able to get the fire going and the rest of the tree we took down will be the fuel after. We're just going to worry about this part first. So this is the piece that split while I was uh, breaking it. You just want to make a lot of little. so. All, all of this wood I'm going to want to get to about pencil, pen, pencil thickness at the most, maybe thumb thickness. So I'm already able to get long thin strips out of it, which is good. Maple is a good wood for split wood fire. This is my preferred way to split wood when it's thin. Drive it into a log like that with a tip. Uh, for a couple of these bigger pieces, we'll have to baton. Nice and easy, though. No problem. 
problem. Okay, that'll be all about all I show of that. You can see there I split all that wood. It took maybe five minutes and I got a ton of little little stuff, so now it's onto the shavings. So shavings are very important. You can see that I have my hat on the ground there to collect the shavings in. You want your shavings to be airy, lots of curls and thin. Those are gonna be the best for you. Even if you only make a few of those and you make your other ones bigger like that, um, the, the smaller ones will catch the fire still and the bigger ones will keep it going. It's better to have good shavings though all the way through. All done doing the curls. You're looking for about a hat full of shavings. We're all set up for our fire. We've got our shavings, our knife, our, our smaller kindling and our bigger kindling. I call this pencil lead and I call that pencil. And that's all we have for now. But normally you would have uh, then your fuel ready to go on top as well. So you want to make sure I put down that bark and then have a piece of wood on top because the bark's kind of flimsy. A piece of wood's going to be a stable piece. This is your brace. You need your brace to support your sticks when you put it on. But the piece here is, is important because when you're pushing down on your fire steel, uh, you need something sturdy. So we're going to put our fire steel right into the shavings and strike down hard. And take the rest of your shavings, put them on top of the fire, and right away grab your secure kindling and lay it all on at once across the brace to keep it up off the, the flames a little bit to give it air. And you don't even really need to wait any longer. You cross your other pieces, your bigger pieces, across the other way uh, on top of the kindling. That's it, guys. Um, hope you learned something from this. I know it's been all, gone through a few times. This is a more in-depth. Uh, look at it so uh, please feel free if you have any questions let me know thanks I've only got four little small pieces to work with here, but with this amount we should be able to get the fire going and the rest of the tree we took down will be the fuel after. We're just going to worry about this part first. So this is the piece that split while I was uh, breaking it. You just want to make a lot of little. So all, all of this wood I'm going to want to get to about pencil, pen, pencil thickness at the most, maybe thumb thickness. So I'm already able to get long, thin strips out of it, which is good. Maple is a good wood for split wood fire. This is my preferred way to split wood when it's thin. Drive it into a log like that with a tip. Uh, for a couple of these bigger pieces, we'll have to baton. Nice and easy though. problem. Okay, that'll be all about all I show of that. You can see there I split all that wood. It took maybe five minutes and I got a ton of little little stuff so now it's onto the shavings. So shavings are very important. You can see that I have my hat on the ground there to collect the shavings in. You want your shavings to be airy, lots of curls and thin. Those are going to be the best for you. Even if you only make a few of those and you make your other ones bigger like that, um, the, the smaller ones will catch the fire still and the bigger ones will keep it going. It's better to have good shavings though all the way through. All done doing the curls. You're looking for about a hat full of shavings. We're all set up for our fire. We've got our shavings, our knife, our, 
our smaller kindling and our bigger kindling. I call this pencil lead and I call that pencil. And that's all we have for now. But normally you would have uh, then your fuel ready to go on top as well. So you want to make sure I put down that bark and then I have a piece of wood on top because the bark's kind of flimsy. This piece of wood's going to be a stable piece. This is your brace. You need your brace to support your sticks when you put it on. But the piece here is, is important because when you're pushing down on your fire steel, uh, you need something sturdy. So we're going to put our fire steel right into the shavings and strike down hard. Okay, we got fire. You can take the rest of your shavings, put them on top of the fire, and right away, grab your secure kindling and lay it all on at once across the brace to keep it up off the, the flames a little bit to give it air. And you don't even really need to wait any longer. You cross your other pieces, your bigger pieces, across the other way uh, on top of the kindling. That's it, guys. Um, hope you learned something from this. I know it's been gone through a few times. This is a more in-depth uh, look at it. So uh, please feel free. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.